Hello everyone, my name is Mirna and on behalf of the Mindalia TV team, welcome to Mindalia live streaming where thousands of people around the world gather daily to see the lectures and interviews organized by Mindalia TV. Today we have our dear Dan Blanchard. He is a best-selling and award-winning author, speaker and educator. And he's gonna be talking with Darwin Shaw. He is an inner city educator, a gym teacher and a health teacher. He is a basketball and track coach as well. Before starting with Dan and with Darwin Shaw, we want to remind you that Mindalia's mission is to share information that can help raise the level of consciousness around the world. You can help us by subscribing to our channel, leaving us a positive comment on this video, or sharing it with someone that you know that is going to benefit to the content that we're going to be talking here today. Also, while we are live streaming, we have the active chat, the screen that you're going to be seeing on my side, and you can interact with us through there. Uh, you can also do it uh, if you're seeing us from a smartphone, that screen is going to be under the video. We want you to collaborate with Mindalia with your own valuable content. For that, you can go to our website. On the top, you're going to find a link that says collaborate with Mindalia. Said link is going to take you to a form that you can fill out for our technical team to be getting in contact with you. Remember that you can collaborate with Mindalia in English through Mindalia TV English. But you can also do it in Portuguese through Mindalia Televisão and Spanish through Mindalia Televisión. Visit our different channels and platforms. We want to hear from you. Also, follow our Facebook pages and Instagram accounts. With that, you not only help us reach as much people in the planet as possible, but you also keep yourself updated with the wonderful information that is being shared on a daily basis. I'm not going to be delaying this any further. It is now my pleasure to leave you with Dan and with Darwin. Guys, welcome to Mindalia live streaming. The screen is yours. Thank you, Mirna. Glad to be back to do another show. Hey, Darwin, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's up, good Dan? Everything is well. Good. Hey, uh, Darwin is an old buddy of mine. Uh, well, we go way back, maybe like 20 years or something like that. Yeah. And uh, some ways I felt like Darwin is, uh, me and Darwin are almost like, uh, you know, brothers from another mother. Now yes. say, so let me introduce my Darwin. Let me introduce you to the audience. Okay. Okay. So Darwin grew up like me in many ways. Darwin grew up in maybe some rough, you know, some rough neighborhoods. Uh, became an athlete. Did very well in athletics. Even worked his way up to becoming an all-American in college. Right. After college, Darwin became a teacher. Like, like myself, coach. And uh, that's actually how we know each other. So we're teachers mm -hmm. and coaches together over there at the uh, Connecticut's largest inner city high school. And then eventually, Darwin writes a book. Mm -hmm. right? Great, great book. Read it. Loved it. All right? So he's an award-winning author. I'm becoming Coach Shaw, How I Learned to Run My Own Race. And uh, he's won a myriad of awards. And now he's a professional speaker as well. And... Uh, like I said, I, I'll say it again. He's won a myriad of awards. So, uh, Darwin, thanks for being on the show. He's my pleasure. Yep. And uh, I know I just scratched the iceberg there on who you are. Perhaps mm. you could uh, fill in a few of the holes and tell the audience a little something about yourself. Uh, uh, just real simply, um, just a man that I, I have a strong faith and believe in God. Uh, I'm a Christian more than anything, and I know that everything that's happened in my life has happened for a reason, and anything good that's happened in my life or bad, it's a result of, of God's greatness to me. I, I struggled a lot in, in my life, and it's because he put those obstacles in the way so I could seek him for help, uh, which propelled me to be the person that I am today. So, you know, I give all honor, praise, and, and glory to, to our Lord. Oh, no doubt. God definitely puts obstacles in our way. For instance, you may be able to hear my voice right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got like this little bit of like laryngitis or something going on. Oh, okay. uh, this, yeah, this weekend, my son wrestled in a tournament down in New Jersey, and I got to be his coach, oh, which is man. awesome. You know, after coaching thousands of kids, I finally got my first chance to coach my own son in the sport that mm -hmm. I love wrestling. And it was great, but I came home with like no voice. So, yeah. so there's no doubt God puts obstacles in our way. Yeah. Our Creator does these things, I think, to to test us, to right. uh, to to uh, help us build resolve. I mean, I always mm -hmm. said, darling, they're like God, you know, whoever whoever uh, 
whoever your creator is for, the, for our audience out there, I don't think that they're concerned about our comfort. Right. I think they're concerned about our co about the content of our character. Yeah. You know I'm saying that's what they're concerned about. And so I know that me and you both grew up, you know, rough neighborhoods, mm -hmm. rough upbringing. Can you talk a little bit about that and how uh -oh. that helped helped you become the man you are? I, I about think how it wasn't easy. Yeah, it wasn't easy for me because I, I grew up in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and I lost my mom at an early age. And, uh, you know, I actually lost my mom when I was nine years old. And I was uprooted and, and raised in New Britain, Connecticut by, you know, an aunt and uncle and, and uh, just family, a couple aunts and a couple uncles and a, a host of... Um, positive people from the neighborhood who took an interest in me for whatever reason. And I developed into that type of person just because I, I was given a chance uh, when I thought I had no chance once I lost my mother. And I was given an opportunity to do something with my life. And there's a host of people that are, are responsible for the person that I've developed and, and, and become. Uh, my father was a was a, a a father, but he was never in my life. But I still respected him uh, the same. You know, he wasn't really part of my life because he remained in Pennsylvania. Uh, but I never had no no dislike or no discomfort from him for him because he wasn't there. But uh, it just was a tough road, and and I didn't know what kind of path God was creating for me. But I'm so glad that He created the path that He did. For me because um, the end is not over and I'm just yeah. here trying to serve a purpose in this life and and for the struggling people uh, that are going through things uh, my life is no different than theirs and, and that's kind of how come I wrote a book uh, being an educator like yourself you know that it's important for us to, to be able to develop these relationships with our students um, yeah. and sharing our story you know Hopefully it gave a lot of them some hope that they could do something within their life uh, and not look at the setbacks that they had in their life, but propel them to move forward. And they need help along the way because you can't navigate your, your, your way through this life without help. And I had plenty of help and, and I respected and I appreciated so many people. When I, I stumbled, there was somebody there giving me positive words of wisdom to move forward in my life and, and not look back at the things that happen because everything happens in your life for a reason. So I'm so grateful to so many people um, that put me in the position to be who I am today. No doubt. I mean, nobody does it alone. I know I had one of my buddy's fathers. He used to pick me up and bring me to wrestling practices. You know, mm -hmm. like I couldn't get there without him. And he used mm -hmm. to pick me up and bring me and I've had you know, other fathers that did the same sort of thing. So now, Don, I mean, you found your way. Sports were great for you. And you had some yeah. people to help you in sports too. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about how sports helped you. Well, sports sports helped me with everything I have in my life right now is based on sports. I, I started in a, in a neighborhood that, you know, when I moved up to Connecticut, it was a great, great neighborhood. Uh, and the friends that I became close with all were involved in sports. But there was this one particular man um, who was like a father to me. And, and he basically was two doors from me and, and me and his uh, son, Dana, and I'm talking about Vieira, Mr. Vieira. He got us all involved with sports. And he told us if we stayed in sports, uh, no matter what was going to come ahead in our life, uh, we could always use the message that we get from sports to 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 uh, be great at something because when you're you're participating in sports you you know you're around a unique group of people but at the same time you you learn how to win you learn how to lose you learn how to be a good teammate there's so much stuff that goes around in sports uh, and I am so so grateful to to Mr Vieira because without him being the one to get all of the neighborhood kids involved uh, we had boys and girls. And I came into, into Connecticut, I was in fourth grade. And to this day, I still look back at some of the lessons that I learned way back in my, my, my childhood uh, that helps me daily on things that I do with my life today. So, you know, 
I have to give all the credit to, to Mr. Vieira just for being there. And then once I got to high school and participated in sports, there was a coach that I had in high school. And you know about great high school coaches, uh, Coach Irving Black. I only ran track one year, but my whole life changed around from running track that one year. I got an opportunity to be on a team that won the state championship in, in Connecticut. And from there, I was given the opportunity to go to college which I didn't think there was any college in my future. Yep. Uh, but just being part of that team, I didn't fill out college applications. I didn't do any of that because my family didn't have any money. And he simply made a phone call and the rest was history. Wow. It's amazing. Donald, no, no wonder why we get along so well. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got, we got so much in common. Mm. I mean, you know, we have, we have people helping us out in sports getting us there, encouraging us. You become an All-American mm. in, in college. I become a two-time Junior Olympian uh, oh, in, in wrestling. Cool. And, and and that's just great stuff. Yes. But it's the little lessons that we learned along the way right? that I think made the biggest difference in our lives, such as never missing practice, yes. always, always being on time, mm -hmm. showing up early, staying late, doing extra work, communicating mm. with your teammates, being a good teammate, being a good team player. I mean, it was so many yep. lessons many that we to learned. To remember. Yeah, too <laughs> many, too many to remember. And I kind of wish today, I mean, there are some high schools out there where every single kid's got to pick a sport and be in a sport. Yep. Your typical high school is not like that. I kind of almost wish there was some sort of mandatory thing. Mm -hmm. where every single kid had to do something extracurricular. Yes. Whether it was a club, a sport, something, right. so that they could gain those skills and those habits of success that helped us so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. Am I, am I missing anything there? No. I mean, what would you share with us on that whole concept? Because I think that, you know, I strongly believe that the, the, the stronger your athletic program is in your school, the better better your school is overall. Why? Because people like sports, people like attending sporting events, and people like to root for their own school. So if we yeah. get more kids involved in extracurricular activities, I don't care if they join a sport, if they're part of a, a club, if they're part of anything. Uh, in our school, we have a big school. You know, the, the music department is a big department. We have a lot of people involved with that. We have a lot of different clubs and we have great sports. The only problem is we have some kids that come to school that don't come for the right reasons, and they're not associated or affiliated with anything, which makes them a, a, a little bit outside of, of, of the school because it seems like there's no belonging to the school. When you're part of those clubs and, and sport teams, there's a belonging. Uh, you're, you're showed how to do things the right way. You're taught how to do things the right way, and most of all, you're, you're showing how to respect the school and respect the community and respect everybody involved with the school. I think if we can get the kids on board to just be part of something within the school, the school uh, becomes a better place. I couldn't agree more with you, Don. That whole belonging thing is so key for today's kids, especially our challenging kids that are not living up to their true potential. You know, yeah. they need to feel like they belong to something. And I know, like when I went to school, we had like championship teams across the board, mm -hmm. you know, fall season, winter season, spring season. And then when I look back, I don't think any of us knew what was really happening. Right. When, I, when I look back, is a high number of my classmates went on to become teachers and coaches. So mm -hmm. all I got to say is that the teachers and coaches of those years in the 1980s back in East Hartford, they must have done something right because yeah. so many of us became teachers and coaches because I think that we felt like we belonged because we all played sports and we were all like doing well and playing like teammates, not individuals, and we all felt like we belonged. So what was it in your life that helped you? I know you became a teacher, are a teacher. I mean, how, did you know, how did you go down that road? How did you know you were going to become a teacher? Uh, I, when I went to college, I, I had to choose a major. And... I had no idea what I was going to do once I went to college. Cause like I said, first of all, I didn't even think I was going to be able to attend college. But when I went down to college in Kentucky, 
Uh, my track coach sent me to a guy named Dr. William Exum, who became the most influential person I ever met in my life. And as I went through um, the general classes in the first semester, you know, as we were getting ready to enter the second semester, you had to pick a major. And he said to me, he said, you're an athlete. Uh, you like sports. Uh, you know, you seem to be like a pretty good student. Said, what does it feel like if you was to go back to your community and become a teacher? And then he asked me, he said, how many African-American teachers did you have growing up? And I could only think of two. Yeah, that's powerful. And he said, he said, you can go back and you can make an impact because you're telling me there's a lot of minorities from from the, the high school and the schools that you attended. And with there not being minority teachers, maybe you can yeah. be one of them. And yeah. that kind of lit, lit a torch under me. Uh, and that kind of got me on the path to become a teacher. I wanted to come back. I wanted to be able to give back. But I wanted to give back to people that look like me because Absolutely. we didn't have those kind of people that look like me in the classroom uh, teaching. And, and that was was a goal that I had set. And that's what I wanted to do. No doubt about it. Thank God you did. You yes. made such a difference in uh, those kids' lives. I mean, I mean, I, for me, it was a little bit easier, I think. I mean, I was already mm -hmm. coaching wrestling. So when it came time for me to pick a career, I was like, well, the best thing in my life right now is that I'm coaching wrestling, and I was actually coaching some youth football too. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what career could I do to help me continue to coach? And teaching just made sense. I right. mean, I was, I was hemming and hawing about it a little bit. Wasn't sure if I wanted to do it, but I know I wanted to coach. So for me, teaching made sense. Mm -hmm. And the two of them have gone together very well. Oh, so, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so go, go back to what, what you were saying, Don, is I am so happy that you're in our school district. <laughs> because when I look around our school district, I don't see enough teachers that yeah. look like the students. And I think that's sad. Yeah, I think I think our kids need to look around and see people in positions of um, influence. Educators, you know, teachers, uh, administration, coaches, um, heck, even the lunch lady, right? Yeah, and I think they, they should look around. Right. And they should see a lot of people that look like them. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of positive role model adults that are making a difference. You know, come in the work every day, have their own success habits that that these kids can learn from. Right. And I think it's sad that we don't have more mm. um, educators in our district and across most of the districts through most of the inner cities. We need more people that look like our students. Yes. Uh, it's a must. So if you're in our audience and you're considering maybe coaching or teaching, I highly encourage you. I know Darwin agrees. Yes. Highly, highly encourage you. Go for it. No get doubt. out there. Get your degree. Get out there. Coach and teach. And, and get out there in the communities, uh, like the inner cities, that could really use some help. Really use yeah. positive uh, role models. Right. So absolutely do it. So mm -hmm. now, did you know, Darwin, that you were going to coach all along? Uh, was that I did not know I was going to coach. What happened was when I finished with, with college, um, I continued to live in Kentucky. And then my second year, I came back. Uh, um, I left Kentucky and I, I came back home. And then I went to Pennsylvania to, to stay with my grandparents for like a half a year. I had the teaching degree, but there were no teaching jobs. So that's why I chose to go to Pennsylvania. And then once I came back, I, I was working Actually, I was doing some construction with a, uh, a teacher uh, that I knew I was doing it with her husband. And I was like, you know, I was down because I like I went to college for all these years and I'm I'm not doing anything in the, in the profession with the degree that I have. So so I was kind of I was kind of frustrated. And then after, you know, three years, a call came in and uh, there was a teacher that was retiring. And uh, the athletic director at the time was a guy named Mr. Hubert, Bill Hubert. And he told me to come in and interview for a job. And at the same time, there was a, a track position open for the, for the uh, girls as well as freshman basketball. And that's kind of how I got started. So I went from 
freshman basketball for a year to becoming the junior varsity basketball coach, which I've done for the past 33 years. And I've done the, the girls outdoor track uh, team for the past 34 years. So I'm into my, actually my 34th year right now. So it wasn't something that, that I had planned to do. It was something that I wanted to do. I didn't know how I was going to do it because I was didn't want to be a coach without, you know, being in the school district and the yeah. teaching came and then the coaching came and, and one uh, hand worked with the other and, and here I am. What a great story. So, Don, what would you tell uh, a kid that was on the fence? You know, let's say um, you saw them. Maybe, uh, you know, they're a good athlete. You see them in gym class, out class, see them around the school, see them at games whatever it may be, and you think that that kid would probably make a good role model, would probably be a good teacher, would probably be a good coach, but that kid hasn't even begun to even think about that yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, how would you approach that kid? I mean, what would you tell that kid to plant a seed that that kid could be, you know, could follow in your footsteps and make the difference that you're making? Well, the first thing is all of the kids that we teach, and you know as well as I know, there's so many of these kids that don't have confidence within themselves. And it's almost like you got to share your story and then they can see what you've done with your life. And then they don't think that their life is so bad. Uh, and that's what kind of inspired me to write my own book is because I had a, a student that was telling me how, how horrible her life was uh, and she didn't know what she was going to do with her life. And then I shared a little bit of how bad my life was. And she said, yeah, but look at you. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, you would have never known that about me if I didn't share some of the, the little stories I shared with you. And she said, Coach Shaw, I would have never believed that you went through anything in your life if you didn't tell me. And yep. then she said, you know, you need to write a book because there's so many kids that's, that's just like me, that were just like you, yep. that, you know, are going through things. And why don't you write a book to share your life story uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that it, it can affect some lives. So, so to answer your question in, in, in short, we as educators or, or just people in general, when you see an opportunity where you can help someone, whether it's an athlete, whether it's a person that wants to do something with their life and they, they have the skills, but they just don't know how to go about obtaining that goal that they're trying to reach, we have to speak up. Because we were blessed and given yeah. something. These, these uh, students of ours, you know, some of them don't see the finish line. Some of them just see where they're at right now and, and, and they kind of give up. But there's a finish line for everyone. So the more we share of our failure and, and how our failure turn, turned into success, we can do the same thing for them. Because some of these great athletes that we have may not have done well in class uh, for three years. And then their fourth year, they kind of turn their life around. That's my story. I, I yeah, did mine too. <laughs> for three years. And then the fourth year, I made the honor roll. I had never made the honor roll in, in my life until my senior year. And, and I knew it was a blessing because now it's time to get in a school that I thought I wasn't going to be able to get in any yep. school. And, and that kind of ignited the flame for me to do something positive. So I, I always talk to the kids about, don't worry about the now. Worry about the mm -hmm. next day. Stop worrying about days beyond tomorrow. Worry about tomorrow and forget about what happened yesterday and concentrate on what's going on in your life today. Because tomorrow's another day and some of those dreams uh, that you're trying to fulfill can start with tomorrow. But yesterday's already gone. So everybody had yeah. yesterday's. But everyone doesn't know what tomorrow's going to bring them. And let's think positive about what we can do tomorrow to do something for our lives that's going to be something productive and, and make our, our families proud of who we are and what we've become. So a lot of stuff, Dan, they got to forget about the past and things that might not have went right in their life and just look at something that, that might be ahead of them, something forward. But they have to seek people in their lives that have struggled and have done something and me and you are those type of people uh that can bounce stuff off of these kids because yes. we've been there oh absolutely i so love how you say that like we've been there we've been through those hard times and we were good athletes but maybe not great students but eventually yeah. we turned it around 
Yeah. You know and we put ourselves in a position where now we can add value to kids' lives through our experiences and through what we're doing. And I love, Darwin, how you said the adults need to speak up. They need to speak up and tell these kids that they can do it. I mean, after all, Darwin, it was students that spoke up to me and you to write books. I mean, right. the, reason I, the reason I wrote a book, the reason you wrote a book, was because students spoke up and mm -hmm. said, hey, you should write a book. You know what I'm saying? So imagine if those students never spoke up and told me and you to write yeah, books. Right. We Where probably would wouldn't be authors. Where would we be today if right. the students didn't speak up, right? So yeah. adults need to speak up. So why don't you tell us, Darwin, a little bit about this book since we're on the topic. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I read your book. I loved it. Loved your story. Mm. And I know a student said you should write a book. That was kind of the genesis of it. Can you kind of take us on that journey about your book? Yeah, so the, so the book pretty much starts off, you know, growing up in Pennsylvania, uh, losing my mother at an early age, and, you know, me and my brothers and sister being um, moved to Connecticut to be raised by extended family. Uh, it goes through all the ups and downs that I've had in my life. Uh, every time I had a setback, uh, you know, I relied on, on my, my faith and my strength in the Lord. Even at an early age when I really didn't know God as well as I know God now, I had a grandmother that was faithful. And I lived in the church. I, I loved being part of the church. But I just didn't, you know, I, I didn't connect with God the way that I needed to. So as I'm, I'm, I'm going through this journey uh, with my life, I knew everything happened for reasons. So the book, it, it goes through some, some peaks and valleys. There's a lot of ups and downs. But at the end of the day, um, it talks about the people that helped me along the way. You know, the, the stories that, that are in the book uh, are about people that actually helped me become who I am. So the title of the book, Becoming Coach Shaw, How I Learned to Run My Own Race, uh, is, is, is what kids need today or people in general need today because we're going through this, this, this journey of life and we're trying to do, a lot of our kids try to do what others want them to do rather than what they need to do themselves. And the book teaches you how to become your own person, how to, how to be strong with your own beliefs, how to run your race and do it the way that you're supposed to and don't be influenced by others to do things that they want you to do. So uh, without giving so much up about the book, because I don't want to, if I share the whole story, then nobody needs to buy the book. So, so the key is uh, I, I struggled in life. I, you know, you had already hit it on and I became an all-American track athlete. Uh, it'll show you the, the trials and tribulations I went through in college when I got kicked off the track team and I was granted another chance to participate again because a new coach came in. And with, with God's strength, I was able to become one of the best in the United States, uh, two-time All-American. But again, it goes back to being helped by um, people in the neighborhood. Again, I, I, I credit coaches, and, and the two that I credit would be Mr. Vieira uh, from my early childhood. And then once I got into high school, it was Coach Irving Black, Coach Black. And then once I went from high school and got to college, it was Dr. Exum. Uh, so those three people put me on the path. And, and it's really, to be honest, Dan, it's a tribute to them, along with my grandmother, who was just, uh, she was the best human being I ever met in my life. Uh, and, and she taught me the values of believing in myself. She taught me the values of trusting in God. And, you know, it was a tribute to her and to the other people that I mentioned of why I wanted to share my story, because I wanted people to know that those are the people that created Coach Shaw yes. or Darwin Shaw. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, a lot of ups and downs, but I, I never gave up on my dreams and I stayed prayerful, I stayed faithful, uh, and I just never forgot. So the best thing I could say about the book is, uh, if you read it, you won't be disappointed. There's so many people that have read the book uh, that have went on Amazon to put reviews 
And uh, the reviews on Amazon, uh, last time I checked, there was something like 133 wow. reviews. And 100 and, out of the 133 re reviews, 129 were five stars. Wow. And four, were four, were four stars. Yeah, so that's amazing. Book two. And I cool. will be, you know, starting on book two. Hopefully this summer I'll be starting on book two. And, and I'm going to pick up right where I left off. That's awesome, Donald. So I'm so happy for you. You know, one of the things, I know Mirna's going to come back on in a moment mm -hmm. to close up the show. But one of the things that I love about um, people like me and you is that we never settle on our lows and rest on our past successes. We're always pushing the envelope, trying to be that role model, that example yeah. for our youth. You yeah. know, you're going to be writing another book. You're also, I know, a professional speaker. You've been on TV a bunch of times. And those are scary things to do. Yeah. That's, just, that's just what we do, right, darling? We, right. Face, we face our fears. Yes. So that we can grow, so that we know how to tell our students how to grow. All they got to do is come to us with an open mind, right? And and we can help them grow and become better people. So yeah. someday they could take our spots, and they could do what we're doing for the next and, generation. And write their own story. Exactly. And right. every one of them has a story. And as long as they understand that, you know, they got to forget about yesterday's. Because uh -huh. yesterday's, whether they were good or bad, they're not coming back. But yes. what is ahead in our life? What's tomorrow going to bring? And yeah. we don't know. Only only the good Lord knows what tomorrow's going to bring for us. But True. we both had some bad yesterdays and good ones. And we have to leave them behind because we're not going to replay those days. But what is tomorrow going to bring for Dan? What's tomorrow going to bring for, for Darwin? That's what we got to look forward to. And how can our lives influence other people's lives that are struggling. See, because a lot of the youth today, you know, they're, they're so focused on what happened yesterday that they're not trying to get to tomorrow. And me and you are both positive people that we know that there's a better day coming tomorrow. No doubt. No doubt. Thanks, Tom. That was awesome. Looks like Mirna's back. It okay. closes out. Welcome back, Mirna. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen for yeah. allowing us to be a channel for, for your wisdom, for your ideas. Before leaving Darwin, I wanted to ask you, where can our audience find you? They can find me. You can always email me at becomingcoachshaw at gmail.com. Um, and, and that's the best way to reach me. Thank you. How about you, Mr. Blanchard? Where can our audience find you? Thank you, Mirna. They can find me all over the internet. Just Google Dan Blanchard, author, speaker. I'm everywhere or danblanchard.net, granddaddysecrets.com. Or, uh, you know, I'm everywhere, social media channels, all of them, YouTube. I'm there. Check me out at Amazon. If you're interested in leadership, check out The Storm. If you're interested in academics, then definitely check out my, my newest book that just came out this weekend on how to be more successful with uh, difficult students. Definitely check that out. And thank you, Myrna. Thank you. I, I, thank can, you. I just give you my... Um, Facebook page. Absolutely. My Facebook page is Darwin Bubby Shaw, and they can reach me through Facebook also. That is perfect. Thank you again for allowing us to be a channel for your ideas and My for pleasure. sharing your time with us. To our audience, again, thank you. And we want to remind you that you can collaborate with Mindalia with your own valuable content, and you can do it in English through Mindalia TV English, Portuguese through Mindalia Televisão, and Spanish through Mindalia Televisión. Visit our different channels and platform. Follow our channels, Instagram, uh, pages and Facebook accounts. With that, you are not only helping us reach as much people in the planet as possible, but you also keep yourself updated with the wonderful information that we have there uh, being shared on a daily basis. Once again, thank you, gentlemen, and thank you, audience. We want to send a big hug from our heart to yours, and until next time, bye-bye.